In July 1934, tension was mounting among workers at Pressed Steel. Meager pay and bad conditions, plus exceptionally hot weather, led to frustration. The factory had no air conditioning, and workers struggled to keep pace with the machinery because of the unbearable humidity. Workers on the night shift had been particularly badly hit by the weather, and they were constantly being underpaid their wages. There were terrible risks in the press shop. Fingers off and hands off, arms off. Some of the girls used to get their heads in the way, and bang, the lever would hit them on the head, and they would be carried out on stretchers. The girls are game, are you? The women were always ready to fight. They were always marching up to the office. It shook us, because we always thought of them as the weaker sex. They do as they're told. But when they turned, they turned. There's no getting away from it. The press steel workers have not only won better conditions and wage increases through their magnificent strike, but have also won a weapon of tremendous power, namely trade union recognition. They must use this weapon. The 14 women employees at the Morris Motors Radiators branch Cantina Oxford who have been on strike since Thursday have won their fight for more pay. They would be given the 3 pence an hour increase, backdated to April the 1st for which they were asking. This will bring their hourly wage up to 2 shillings 9 pence. Throughout their fight for rights and equality over the past century, what has held back their victories has not been any lack of willingness to fight, or any lack of courage and vision in their struggles, nor any hesitation among other workers to support them. The decades of Cowley trade union experience demonstrates that, on the contrary, women have been held back by the continuous thwarting of their actions by those trades union officials who appear indifferent to the consequences of increased exploitation, especially for their women workers. The women never could come to their feet until the war, and then, my God, did they come to show the men up. They were really as good as us any time. Mind, it's because we had a different type of woman. We had hundreds of them came down from London. Oh, they did dig their heels in. They showed the people the way to get organised and all that. Deaf workers at BL and Cowley got help for the first time at mass meetings over the cleaning up strike. Trade union leaders invited social worker Ursula Skelton from the Oxford Deaf Centre to the meetings. She used sign language to translate the words of speakers and the hecklers for eight deaf assembly plant workers. There were some, however, who opposed the strikes. Blonde Carol Miller and her wife's army marched into battle yesterday to try to get their husbands back to work. These militants are threatening everything I care about. My family, my home, my husband, our entire way of life. We're going to stop it. I'm all in favour of it. They've got to make a stand. If they don't make a stand, they'll never get anywhere. I am classed as a militant. If being a militant means protecting men's safety, I do not get paid when I'm on a strike. My family find it very difficult. Women have played a crucial part in the collective history of Oxford and their bravery and their creativity should be remembered.